Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Nintendo Prime. Uh, we This is not a Switch OLED video, although we are giving away a Switch OLED. Uh, that one you see behind us, uh, we're giving away a Switch OLED literally this week on Friday. Uh, to enter, you just need to be subscribed to the channel. So, you know, you might as well go ahead and do that. Uh, but yeah, we, I already got, you know, the light and the Switch and another Switch here that's taken apart. Um, I'm getting all prepared here. I have lots of comparisons and things going on behind the scenes. But today we're going to actually talk about four big news stories. Uh, we'll worry about Switch OLED another day, maybe tomorrow, maybe Friday. Uh, we have a lot to go over with that platform. But for now, let's focus on this amazing news, including stuff uh, from Treasure, a video game company. Uh, we also have um, stuff from Nintendo France about Pokemon games. Very interesting there. We have Nintendo expanding their park at Universal Japan. Uh, and some news about Metroid Dread. So our first story comes from Treasure LTD on Twitter. Uh, their Japanese account uh, teased future additions to Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, so here are here's the exact quote. It says, Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack with Nintendo 64 and Genesis have been announced. T stay tuned for the start in late October and for future editions. Now, we assume, obviously, this being a video game company, they're talking about future editions of their games. Uh, they're known for games even like Astro Boy, but they actually have a, a very deep library of classic games, not ones that I'm super familiar with, but I have heard of a few of them. Uh, so this is obviously something that to be excited about, potential SNES and Genesis and N64 games from this company coming to Switch. It's also possible, and I this is something that I kind of doubt, uh, that the future editions could be referencing future platforms coming to Nintendo Switch. Now, they could possibly know that since they would have to be contacted for permission uh, to put their games on that service. So again, and they have had games on Game Boy in the past and stuff like that, so... I don't know. It's kind of speculative at that point. I think it's all speculative at this point, uh, what this all means. Uh, but Treasure LTD is definitely looking forward to supporting uh, what's happening here with Switch Online. Uh, and that's nothing but good news. I hope more companies come out voicing support, even if they don't currently have games already on the platform. That way we know, hey, look, they're willing to actually work with Nintendo and expand that library of classic games. Next up, we have some news on Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Uh, news that's going to disappoint people if it is true. Uh, we could call this a rumor, but considering the source being Nintendo France, we're just going to kind of go with what they said. Uh, Nintendo France on their Facebook page put out there that there will only be Pokemon in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl through Generation 4. Now, while this has not been officially announced by the Pokemon company, Nintendo France is obviously an official branch of Nintendo who owns the rights to Pokemon. So if they are saying this, chances are it's probably true. And it does fall in line with what the current head of the series noted back during Sword and Shield before it came out, that they were no longer going to have any games in the future that had all Pokemon in one game, at least in the mainline series. And even though prior remade, remastered Pokemon games have included significantly more Pokemon, if not all of them, at least a lot of them, uh, that were had that came out after that generation. Uh, that's just not happening this time around. So this is going to be disappointing for some people. This is going to cause people not to want to order the game. Some people were already expecting this to be the case. Uh, so I'm very curious where you sit on this. Personally, I find that I don't care. Uh, then again, I don't really care about catching them all. Or I, I don't even know. I guess people just wanting their favorite Pokemon in every single game. I'm always of mind that like if you're using the same Pokemon in every single game, I think it just loses a little bit of the luster of what that Pokemon game is. I know. I'm probably in the minority on that. I probably pissed off a lot of Pokemon fans with that statement, but hey, it is what it is. This appears to be what's happening according to uh, Nintendo of France, so we'll have to just wait and see for official confirmation. But I mean, this came from Nintendo. Whatever. Wait for the Pokemon company. So I guess to confirm this, uh, or maybe say nothing about it at all, uh, just because they know about the negative backlash. All right, next up, uh, Nintendo is expanding their Universal Park in Japan. Now, we've actually known about this expansion for almost six months. It just was never actually announced, even though construction had already begun. 
Nintendo has now announced that they are expanding their Universal Park uh, it, it, as of 2024. That's when it will open with a Donkey Kong expansion. This expansion will include a roller coaster that is minecart themed, which of course it will. Uh, so we'll have to see how that turns out. Uh, obviously, there's been a bit of a snafu getting the Super Mario World one launched, not because it's not ready, not because people don't love it when they're there, but because of obviously the pandemic, opening, closing, opening, closing, mask, no mask, etc. It's been kind of a hot mess, but uh, that has not stopped them from going forward to it. Obviously, Universal and Nintendo envision a future where there's not going to be these current pandemic problems and we'll get back to a semi-regular life. And that's when, obviously, this, these sort of expansions can take off. Of note, Super uh, Mario World, Nintendo World, whatever, is being built also in Universal Florida. Chances are there will be a Donkey Kong expansion there as well someday. If they don't do Donkey Kong, it would be, you know, see what they do else. I've always wondered about a po possible Pokemon expansion. Uh, we've had Pokemon theme parks in the past. Possible, uh, you know, Zelda would also be a really, really big one that they could do. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Nintendo also announced that Donkey Kong, in terms of the total series sales, have reached 65 million, uh, which when you consider the number of Donkey Kong releases, it might not sound impressive. But uh, still, 65 million is nothing to scoff at, and hopefully this is a precursor to actually getting a new Donkey Kong game announced like there has been rumors. All right, moving into our last story, Metroid Dread. So people have been debating. Some have been debating just, is Metroid Dread worth $60? We actually put a poll up about that. It seems that most of you feel like it is, but that's neither here nor there. What we care about here is obviously sales. And you might say, why do we care about sales? We're not Nintendo. We're not the ones making bank off of these games. We care about sales because sales gives a company incentive to create more games like the one that sells well. Breath of the Wild, as an example, blew up to 25 million units. So guess what? We're getting a Breath of the Wild 2. And we also technically got a prequel in Age of Calamity. So when you think about it, sales tells the company to do more of this good thing. So if I love Metroid Dread as much as I think I, I will, obviously I want it to sell very well, but there's been a lot of debate on the sales of Metroid Dread as well, because Metroid is not a franchise that actually sells that well. Its best-selling game is around 4 million in the original Metroid Prime. Otherwise, pretty much 2 million is usually where Metroid games cap out at beyond that very first Metroid Prime. Even Prime 2 and Prime 3 didn't you know, do record-breaking numbers. Well, Here's some good news for Metroid fans and fans of Dread. Metroid Dread has reached, in wake of the previews dropping over the last few days, the number one seller spot for video games in terms of the actual games, like the best-selling game on Amazon. This is usually a massive indicator of huge influx of sales and obviously great launch sales. There have been large debates about whether or not this, this game can hit 2 million. Can it hit 3 million? Can it hit 5? I'm a proponent that I think this is going to be a five plus million seller and become the greatest or best selling Metroid game of all time. We'll have to wait and see. Obviously, this sales indicator is a great um, start. But again, this is just Amazon in the U.S. This isn't all retailers in the U.S., even though it's the largest one. It's obviously not retailers out in uh, in Japan or other countries as well. So we'll have to see how Metroid Dread actually does at launch. But I'm expecting a record launch for a Metroid title. And I am expecting record sales for a Metroid title, which would be north of $4 million. But we'll have to wait and see. Um, some people, other YouTubers out there, have some weird bets going on that this thing's going to sell like crap because Metroid usually always sells quote-unquote like crap. I mean, a couple million, nothing to scoff at, but also, hey, that's kind of just what Metroid does. Uh, it's kind of like the 3D Kirby game. Some people are wondering, how well is that going to sell? Kirby games usually only sell $1 to $2 million. Is a 3D one suddenly going to sell more? And then there's also been criticism of that game because people think, oh my God, it doesn't look that great. Which is weird because Kirby's never been a looker. I don't know. People are just bitching to bitch, I think, at this point. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, but that's what I got for you today. Nice, short, and sweet for you. No super long video. I've got so much work to do with the OLED. With the Switch OLED on hand, yes, I have a Switch OLED. Um, maybe I'll even talk about how I got my hands on one. Uh, but... For now, uh, because I have that, I have so much focus around all my coverage of that. Um, currently, right now, I'm actually taking it apart. Um, but again, you'll have to wait for my video that I think is dropping on Friday uh, to really see the full comparison. Because uh, I am making a full comparison to uh, the normal Switch and the Switch Lite um, and the docks and everything uh, we'll be putting. We'll be, it, it's going to be just really, really in-depth. Um, so I hope you're 
honestly looking really forward to it because we're going to compare everything from the unboxing experience to uh, what they're like when they're taken apart. Um, you know, to just there's, there's so much. Um, so yeah, that video is, is currently in the works and just going to take a couple days to make sure we do it right, get it right, want it done in the most professional manner we can at this channel. Um, but yeah, a lot of my focus is, is on the Switch OLED videos right now. So a lot of these standard news videos are going to feel a bit rushed. It is what it is. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojance, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.